Hello, my name is Salote Mafileo Pilolevu Tuita. I am the only daughter of His Majesty King Taufahau Tupo IV in the Kingdom of Tonga in the South Pacific. Our country has progressed significantly under his leadership and at the same time preserved much of its precious heritage. Nothing quite captures the spirit of the Tongan people, their love of God, their king, and their country, like the elaborate performances at a major celebration or katoanga. In June and July of 1998, his Majesty celebrated his 80th birthday. Among other things, it was a time of joyous dancing and singing, the likes of which have not been seen in Tonga in many years. I invite you now to enjoy some of these important traditional performances for they say much about the heart of the Tongan people and their magnificent heritage. <laughs> One central feature of the Tongan heritage is that Tonga itself is a nation of dancers and singers. <laughs> Just as it is known as the Fonuanga Ofa, or Friendly Islands, it is also known as the Fonua Faiva, land of performers and performances. Another feature of this grand heritage is that whole neighborhoods, villages and districts come together at celebrations in a single production of singing and dancing. This means young and old, rich and poor, high rank and low, all people of the society unite to dance and sing and rejoice in their common legacy.
Vai falhar, tem minha cor ali. Fogar fofa, bem, eu tava ro. Capaz de ter ruluang, me fogar fofa, goni, eu fogar fofa, tá na aí, pang aí. Tá lá, teu ano tá aí, cofui pang aí. A third feature of this heritage is that Tongans have borrowed and adapted a number of art forms from other island nations and made them their own. The Kailao, originally from the islands of Uvea, is a recent addition to the Tongan performing arts. Unlike most other Tongan Fiva, the Kai Lao is performed only by men with stylized short spears. There is no singing, only the skillful handling of the spear, the percussion of feet and drums, and the energy and enthusiasm of the dancers. <laughs> In Tonga, there are so many dances that we import from uh, other countries. For instance, uh, Maululu, Mako, Tangfraniwa, and several others, they were imported. The reason why Kailao came to Homa, it was I who brought this to home. There were foreigners here many years ago, and they lived in Hapai with the Tongans. Here. And it was one of these Tongans who came and stayed with us. He came from Uwea, and they stay with the Tongans in Hapai. And he did the Kaila with the ex. And the uh, people look, they've never seen anybody doing this with a, with a, quite a long act. And he performed so well, they were very happy and they clapped. And then we knew he, he, he could play uh, the Kai Lao. So when the ceremony came, I, I said to the Homa people, we're not having Laka Laka. We're going to have Kai Lao. Yes, yes, I'll bring the man here. So I took him to Homa and they all make up their stick, wooden, and then they learn, they learn, and now Homa can do it. They all performed uh, Kaila there. Also, Matangyaki, next to uh, the Hona, they all performed uh, Kaila there. The most frequently performed large group dance in Tonga is the Ma'ulu'ulu of Samoan origin. Seated on the ground, men and women intermingling, the performers are accompanied by drums. The dance movements are accomplished by the upper body. Perhaps the most famous Ma'ulu'ulu outside Tongatapu is the group from Uiha Ha'apai. Yet Uiha's performance is a Ma'ulu'ulu with a difference.
composed by the late Penny Tutuila. This composition features women seated in front and the men performing standing up along the back. Not to be bound by convention, the composer combines elements of many different Tongan dances, the Kailao, the Ma'ulu'ulu, and the Lakalaka. Not to mention the energetic drumming. Universal dance in Tonga is the Tawalunga, originating from the Samoan Tawalunga. <laughs> Typically a solo performance, the Tawalunga features the hands, the feet, the face and head of the performer. The sudden head movement to the rhythm of the music is known as fakateki. It is considered one of the most alluring aspects of Tongan dance. The most venerable dance among all the traditional dances of Tonga is the lakalaka, a communal group dance of up to 200 performers. These performers dance with energy and precision, much like their ancestors who excited early European guests with singing and dancing spectacles. Most likely evolving from an ancient group dance called Me'elau Fola, the lakalaka was invented by Paramount Chief Tukuaho from the village of the Takamotonga. Some experts think the idea of the lakalaka may have been prompted by the dancing of school children, approved by the Wesleyan missionaries as a tool to learn mathematics or maths. What they did was maths, as you know, maths, tables of maths there, and then they said, uh, in Tongan, twice one or two, twice two or four, twice three or six, and in Tongan, it's it's the same thing, but the school kids did not stand still. You have to laka laka, which means move, move or keep moving. So they pronounce their tables in, uh, in mathematics by moving their feet this way. Move up and down. Move. One, two, three, four. Daha, ua, tolfa. Keep on moving, keep on moving until they got that. And, uh, and some inventors in Tonga said not only for education, but for entertainment. So they composed. They composed Although it may have had some beginning with school children, the lakalaka had emerged fully by the 1860s as a new art form in Tonga. By then, the Western harmonies introduced by Christian missionaries had made a powerful impact on Tongan music, especially upon the music of the lakalaka. I think the, uh, the music itself was fairly full-blown before, before the missionaries came. But the, uh, the way everything was deployed, I mean, how the, the parts, how the harmony, was very much influenced by the missionaries. Before 
missionaries came. I believe much of the music was sung in the minor mode, but the missionaries effected a change that uh, tended to majorize everything. Balakalaka, laka, meaning literally to stride back and forth, is an art form that eloquently combines poetry, choral music, and dance. Tataanga, Hiva, and Haka. Like the cover ceremony, the Lakalaka Laka always affirms allegiance to the king and to the foundation and values of the Tongan society. Also like the cover ceremony, the Lakalaka Laka reflects societal rank and acts as a vehicle for cultural transference. Lakalakas, in my view, are some of the greatest music in the world. And they have this this organization that somehow brings together the whole society. Yes, of course, the Lakalaka is a faithful photograph of the ranking of the people in the Lakalaka itself. For example, the Wahenga, of course, are the highest chiefs, uh, have the highest social status in that group, and the two Fakapoto. The Taofi Wahenga, that is the second positions in both sides, men and are the next ranking uh, people in, the, in both sexes. And the third is usually reserved for the best dancer, Malie. And then the rest of the positions are up to the Punaketu fill in as he, as he uh, judges best. Huh? But there you have this, uh, these key positions given to uh, Tongan culture and social ranking. Clearly the two Vahinga are essential to the presentation of the Lakalaka. They are paramount chiefs or children of chiefs. The male Vahenga must be of equal or approximate rank with the female Vahenga. If he is not present, the performance cannot proceed. For example, at one critical moment when the Lakalaka from Kanokupolu, the king's village, was to perform at the royal celebration, the designated male Vahenga failed to show. No one of appropriate rank was present to perform that function except the Prime Minister himself, the Honorable Baron Vaya. But then one uh, person came up to me and says, Vaya, you must come. I said, oh, what? What's happened? You must come and perform on the number one because uh, it is the... Uh, it is the village of the king, Kanukupolu, and they have come here to pay their respect to the king and uh, to, the, to the grandchildren of the king. They have come. But the number one is, is not here. And uh, to find out where he is, and uh, we thought maybe someone replaces him. And we thought, you are the one to come and replace him, and that you are very handy, you're right amongst the spectators there. So that is why I went in, to close the gap for the village and the people of, uh, of the king. Close the gap. Well, uh, I uh, did not, did, I should have had a little practice, but I didn't. But uh, whatever I gather from my left, I'm very good at watching the left and right, <laughs> whoever is performing there. I can sort of look over and knew that we are turning left or turning right. And uh, that's why you saw me there standing in uh, as emergency for the missing person. As important as rank and chiefly status are, 
The excitement of the lakalaka is in the singing and precision dancing of the entire group. The movement of the men is expansive and made up of grand flourishes. It is free, virile, and strong. The movement of the women is contained largely in the upper body, most compellingly in the arms and hands. It is restrained, soft and graceful. I guess I tried to learn that from the Tongans. I would try to find out what it is that they were looking at that made someone a good dancer or the best dancer or the Mali uh, And usually it seemed to me what they were pointing out was how their, their whole upper body uh, was used and especially how their head was used. And so this little fakateki that they do is always, I think, a very important element on choosing uh, or deciding whether somebody is a good dancer or not. Now sometimes that fakateki is choreographed in but usually it isn't. And so it comes from the feeling in the inside, the warmth coming out when you uh, are exhilarated. And usually I found that that was the first thing that they looked at, is how they move their head. And quite often when the feathers are in their, in their hair, the, how the feathers sort of move as they move their head. So that was usually the first. Uh, also, how they held their upper body, whether it was, whether it was uh, uh, straight, didn't move a lot. They didn't. They usually don't move their shoulders a lot, but hold their hold their upper body straight. And how their uh, lower body, especially for women, just moves very slightly, slightly to the right and then slightly to the left, and never moving your hips in the way that, say, a Hawaiian or a Tahitian dancer would do. Certainly the power and grace of the dancing and the rich harmonies of the singing, together with elaborate costumes, make up the unforgettable spectacle of the lakalaka. But it is also the poetry, the lyrics or ta'anga of the lakalaka that capture the Tongan imagination. The poet often organized his lyrics, or ta'anga, in three parts, beginning with the fakatapu, or the formal acknowledgement of royalty and guests. Then came the kavenga, or the principal subject matter of the performance. And finally, the tatau, or the conclusion. In earlier days, composers would often include what was known as fetau, good-natured bragging and self-congratulations by the composer at the expense, of course, of other composers and performing groups. This practice seems to have disappeared. Be <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Like that of the Faifekau or minister of the church, 
Enda Matapule, or the chiefly spokesman in the cover ceremony, the Bunaki's duty is to help inculcate the traditions and values that make up the Tongan identity, love of king, God, and all things Tongan. Indeed, the Punake is the great purveyor of Tongan culture, and the Lakalaka is the preeminent art form. Composed in the 1930s by the Punake Niwinga Tony Liu from the village of Navutoka, the Nooanga depicts the ancient art of catching sharks. This ingenious composition was written in honor of the present king as a young scholar. As such, the Nooanga is a grand artistic metaphor. As the great Tongan fishermen were successful catching sharks, so will the royal heir be successful in his studies. Of course, the power of the metaphor lies in the history and legends surrounding the ancient art of shark catching, unique to the village of Navutoka and the little island of Eweki. For these ancient fishermen, shark hunting was a sacred ritual that involved the entire village. The technique was so dangerous, it required the villagers to take on obligations of reconciliation and forgiveness to gain divine favor. For the fishermen, the place of purification and reconciliation was the Falesiu, the fishing house, where a ritual cover ceremony was held. Preparation included important items, a rope for the lasso, or maya, food for the fishermen, or manava, chunks of pork for the bait, or maunu, and a device called fangongo to shake in the water to attract the sharks. Each canoe was prepared with care, without argument or contention of any kind. The fishermen are called Sinilao, after the famous lover of the shark goddess, Hina. The sharks are referred to as Hina. Hina! Hinae, 
As Hina appears, the Sinilao must not show fear. Otherwise, the spell will be broken and the sharks will not approach. If the sharks keep their distance, the captain orders one of the Sinilao to leap into the ocean with gifts of food for Hina and lead her back to the canoe. When the captain sees the sharks following Sinilao, he shouts, Marie, Marie, bravo, excellent. The captain then shouts, Viri, Viri, Behoko, turn and come into the noose. Going for the bait, the shark swims into the noose, lowered in the water by the Sinilao. Because it is forbidden to shed the blood of the shark, the fishermen kill it with a mallet. With each blow, the Sinilao shout, Deao, 100. The shark is then heaved into the boat. With their precious catch, the captain orders the Sinilao to return home. As they approach the shore, conch shells are blown to inform the villagers the fishing has been successful. The entire village celebrates the voyage and distributes the catch. The largest portion will be taken to the royal compound. The rest will be distributed to the families of the village. Thus the Nooanga Lakalaka preserves and portrays an ancient ritual, which is part of the identity of the people of Navutoka.
The significance of the No'oanga Lakalaka lies in its praise of the king, who from far and wide in the world has brought the fruits of progress to Tonga during his reign. A new face and a new name among Tongan composers was featured during the King's birthday celebration. Mele Suipi Fakatavalatu is the daughter and granddaughter of famous Punake from Vava'u, headmistress of a school for girls and a minister in the Free Wesleyan Church. Mele had never composed a lakalaka. But when she was asked by Princess Pilolevu herself to be the Punake of one grand lakalaka representing all of Vava'u, Mele set herself to the task. Kago uraki fayen ea we laka laka, o fatu, ea fayen faka fasi, ea fayen mohono faka haka. Aya ku fo o au pito ea, ki e toka lahe. Ko e ikai nga tae ko tui, mahalo ko e rak fo fo fi fi ne peeni, ko ne faya ha ha laka laka, o fotu moya i haka ato anga la lahe. Mele's lakalaka was not all newly created. She used many melodies which she remembers from her famous father and grandfather, Fakatava.
The lyrics o ta'anga of Meles Lakalaka are in praise of the life of His Majesty, King Taufa'ahau Tupo IV. Unrestrained praise of the royal throne is typical of many Lakalaka. But unlike the typical ta'anga, Mele's lyrics broke with tradition by avoiding elaborate poetic metaphors and difficult allusions called heliaki. Mere Fakatava and the people of Vava'u moved the vast crowds at His Majesty's birthday celebration by the sheer size of their lakalaka and by the quality of the performance. It was a village uh, participation, a community thing, this Laka Laka. So we, we would have uh, grandmothers, mothers, grandsons, and great-grandsons or great-granddaughters participating. All, all four of them of the generation would be participating in this Laka Laka. It was an absolutely stunning sight. The fact that you have a female composer doing something traditionally reserved for men, that caught a lot of people's attention. And the fact that they had performers from all over Vava. Most Lakalaka groups are village specific. But here the traditional rivalries between villages, schools, clans, churches, all disappeared in this wonderful manifestation of a united Vava'u.
They said that never before in their lives had they actually grown to know and love each other. They knew each other as villagers, but they didn't have that national feeling. It was uh, wonderful, uh, but all the churches sent representations and it was, it was joyous to, to see. Before, people didn't know each other's names from villages, from towns, from small islands. Now they do. They wave to each other when they see each other, they talk to each other. And it was a, a feeling of, of wholesomeness, of, of well-being, of, of being a Vava'u national. I love dancing. I've been dancing since I was a child, informally. Although it wasn't easy, it was a challenge because 13 verses in the lakalaka is a pretty long lakalaka. My husband was rather nervous at performing in the lakalaka. This was his very first lakalaka. He had never danced before, any Tongan dancing. So, to perform the lakalaka, which is the essence of Tongan traditional dancing, was a heavy responsibility for him. Thus, the Vava'u lakalaka, the Ma'i Moa, was a fitting combination of the old and the new of the traditional artistic conventions and the creative imagination of a young female punake. But just by performing that ta'anga, was, was a very spiritual feeling for me. Um, just hearing that tremendous roar of singing you know, from, from behind me was something I had never experienced before. It was a, a different mafana that I experienced that day. As excellent as all the performances are, the lakalaka from Tataka Motonga on Tongatapu provides the grand finale to the king's birthday celebration. Led by Malukava Vaikona Kavai Fiafi, third in line of great composers, the Tataka Motonga lakalaka has a mystique all its own. Because of their special relationship with the royal family and in honor of their noble ancestors, the performers wear black costumes decorated with aromatic flowers and leaves specific to their village. Consider the place where the lakalaka developed as an art form and home of the king's father, Tungi Mailefihi. The Takamotonga has set a standard of artistic excellence over the years, 
which many villagers aspire to. Fiercely proud of their place in the artistic heritage of their past, the Tataka Motonga Lakalaka performs with an air of confidence and grace, difficult to match. Days before the king's birthday performance, the Tataka Motonga villagers practice before Her Royal Highness, Princess Salote Mafile Opilolevu Tuita. When you watch the Tataka Motonga people, they're such brilliant performers. Every individual seems to be a brilliant performer, but they seem to be all performing as one body. Of course, they are the original Laka Laka, the Dama Tonga is, but it's the spirit of a Laka Laka. It's the Ta'anga. It's how people feel when they're performing and they're singing. I think that makes them a good Laka Laka. If I got out of the Tatamotonga, get that Talako to Mari,
Filled with joy, they revel in the celebration, dance in the spirit of their ancestors, and sing with the voice of their past. Neither a cold rain nor increasing darkness could dampen the spirit of the Tataka Motonga Lakalaka. Their performance was a grand declaration of their heritage for themselves and for all Tongans. ปะเตชิโอเกตุอะมาลกาลาโกเอมุอะไฟมาโกเอตะตะกะมอตุอีกไกเกงาตะเปเอกชิโอกะมาโกไฟมาฟะฟะไฮกชิโออะกูเอก
on the town wall. We are going to turn back again, puke puke hegu. Hegu hanga he faiwa, mo te mahu inga ia ai. O puke puke mai faiinga ulunga anga, fakatonga, fekau aki mo mo faka apa apa, ko fe toka i aki, ko fe ofo ofani, o ku o mahu inga ai toka puke puke. Kau fakar mufoki, mau tol kau ni tahu fonua. Ia hak be fakar kalak kaya fai, kai kai tu mau be anai tonga belot. Fakar up, mau tak kimu ah mereka huiki tui, fakar apa apa yang mereka tu. Aku be fakar mupe, eh mutu aku ini, ke malu yang yang mereka tu tui tui huiki mau lotu. Quem é que faz fogo para a tonga que tu uma moto? Alguém faz lá lá caia que tu uma o pega na tonga. We have always been concerned with what is important in the Tongan way of life. This celebration has brought out all the goodness in Tongan people, all the goodness in Tongan life. The most essential part is love. You cannot divert from that.